Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest updates that you should know about as an investor. So without further ado, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. As you can see on screen, the general stock market has fallen substantially. We even saw the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both fall around 1.61% and 2.23% recently, and this marked one of the largest decreases in the NASDAQ since October. The NASDAQ tracks a lot of technology stocks, and it seems that technology stocks were hit particularly hard because the Federal Reserve did not decrease interest rates as soon as investors originally wanted them to. The main reason why stocks are falling right now, which is why you're seeing so much red on screen, is because the Fed held interest rates steady. However, they did indicate that they will cut rates in the future. Investors are clearly overreacting, considering that they are selling their shares, even though it's going to be a short-term delay from now until when the Federal Reserve actually decreases the overall interest rate or the prime rate, and that will actually ignite the overall stock market. So I personally am buying into various indices right now. And then my plan is just to hold until the Federal Reserve eventually does decrease interest rates, and then I'm going to receive a hefty payday once the stock market rebounds and surges higher. So I would love to hear your thoughts about the story down below. Next up, we have a lot of technology CEOs and executives being grilled right now. Various top executives appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday in a very intense hearing. We saw executives from companies like Meta Platforms, X, which was formerly known as Twitter, Discord, Snapchat, and TikTok all present in this legal hearing. The reason why they were gathered before the Senate Judiciary Committee was because various parents and families were not happy about how they have neglected to protect children from exploitation on their various platforms. If you're not familiar with these companies, they operate social media platforms, and the public, as well as the Senate Judiciary Committee, believes that these companies could do better to protect children. The one that's normally in the hot seat from this group is Meta Platforms, because they have been under heavy fire as of late, especially since they've been sued by dozens of states for, quote, allegedly failing to protect children from the addictive nature of its apps. The biggest problem facing these companies right now is for them to stop the exploitation of children, where other people can take advantage of children through their social media platform. But what are senators really doing about this? Well, according to the article, during the hearing, senators discussed several bills aimed at preventing harm to children. One of the proposed bills was the Kids Online Safety Act, also known as the KOSA. On top of that, there was another act, which was called the Stop CSAM Act, which would make it easier for victims to sue technology companies. Now, interestingly enough, at the hearing, only a representative from X, formerly known as Twitter, to where Elon Musk himself is the CEO, and Snapchat were in favor of the KOSA Act, which was the Kids Online Safety Act. This puts these technology companies in deep water, and if you didn't know, Meta Platforms as well as Snap both have stock on the general stock market, meaning that this negative publicity could weigh on their overall share price. But honestly, Meta Platforms is prepared to take on legal battles as they have in the past, and I would still invest into this company because I believe they are an extremely fundamentally strong company. I also want to bring to your attention that these companies can only do so much in regards to child exploitation to prevent this from happening. What would help a lot would be proper parenting, which would keep some of these children away from addictive apps, and on top of that, for the parents to actually teach children proper behavior and online safety. The technology company just provides the platform, and sure, they can do better to protect children, but this also has to be treated from both angles, including parenting. However, that's just my two cents. Moving along here, let's talk more about the Federal Reserve and interest rates. As of right now, interest rates most likely will not be lowered in March, and that's what investors were frustrated about. This frustration has rippled throughout the stock market, and that's why the overall stock market has been trending downwards. But like I said before, it's only a matter of time before the stock market rebounds and reaches new all-time highs, and that's why I personally am still investing heavily into the stock market. It's obvious that most investors want the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates now. But after their latest meeting concluded, Jerome Powell, who is the chairman of the Federal Reserve, splashed cold water on that idea. However, he did say at least that they plan to cut their interest rates in the coming year. This means throughout the remainder of the year, we are going to see a multiplicity of interest rate cuts happening at different times. And this is going to act as a very positive catalyst for the general stock market, which is why I am investing in
in to the stock market right now while it is pulling back, which means I'm getting it at a cheaper price point. We also have Disney in the news, and we're going to talk about this company twice. The first story is in regards to a legal battle, and the second is in regards to them cracking down on password sharing. Recently, a federal judge stopped Disney's lawsuit, which claimed that Florida's governor, who decided to take power over the special business district where Disney World sits, was somehow unlawful. But the judge did not take this lawsuit seriously. Therefore, the judge threw it out and Disney is stuck floating the bill. I think this may have some minor reverberations in Disney's overall share price, but in essence, I still think Disney is a pretty fundamentally solid company. We also have Elon Musk and Tesla in the news today because a state judge ruled this week that Elon Musk's $55 billion pay package from Tesla was, quote, exorbitant and unfair. Basically, the judge avoided the largest corporate executive payout in history. However, Elon Musk and Tesla will likely appeal this decision. But you probably already knew that. But in this update, here's where things get interesting. In the immediate aftermath, Elon Musk told his followers on X, which was formerly known as Twitter, to quote, never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware. Elon Musk even asked his followers on X whether or not he should move Tesla to Texas instead of Delaware. And this is no surprise considering that Elon Musk has already moved X from Delaware to Nevada, so clearly he is capable of doing this. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, if he doesn't like Delaware, why did he incorporate Tesla in Delaware? Well, for context, nearly 70% of Fortune 500 companies are incorporated in Delaware. There are two main reasons for this. The first reason is because there are some tax benefits, and secondly, the courts there are ran by experienced judges with an expertise in business law. So essentially, it protects the company. However, in this case, it seemed to backfire on Elon Musk. I don't think this news update will cause volatility in Tesla's share price, considering that they've already been so volatile over the last few weeks, but I am loving the volatility because I'm buying this company on lows. So honestly, I hope it keeps dropping in their share price because I want more. Speaking about electric vehicle companies, let's talk about BYD. BYD is a Chinese EV maker, which has the ticker symbol BYDDY. And the reason that they're in the news is because they sold more cars than Tesla did last year. The demand for BYD electric vehicles is absolutely insane. And BYD is also trying to get into the shipping business because they are shipping and exporting so many of their electric vehicles. According to the MIT Technology Review, last year BYD shipped 240,000 vehicles, which is a huge increase from their original 55,000, which they did in 2022. However, by BYD exporting their electric vehicles outside of China, they are facing heavy costs. For instance, the price to rent a vessel which is capable of exporting their cars overseas has increased dramatically. As an example of this, back in 2019, you could rent something like this for around $17,000. However, in 2023, that cost has skyrocketed up to 115,000 vehicles. But it seems that BYD thinks it's worth the risk. So if you didn't know about BYD before, I would highly recommend you look further into that company. We also have Walmart back in the news, and they are doubling down on their brick and mortar stores, even though a lot of consumers tend to shop online. Walmart is planning to add 150 larger stores in the next five years. Ultimately, this will lead to higher revenue and earnings per share, while Walmart doubles down on both their brick and mortar stores as well as their online business. In two smaller news stories, you see that Biogen plans to stop selling their controversial Alzheimer's treatment because this treatment is extremely expensive expensive, and honestly, the proof of its effectiveness just wasn't in the literature. So I don't even know what this company was thinking by charging people an extremely high dollar price for their overall pharmaceutical without any real proof of its effectiveness. Honestly, that's just terrible and bad business, and they're going to get what's coming to them. Next, let's talk about H&M's CEO, who unexpectedly resigned. H&M has seen declining sales and increased competition lately, especially from online giants such as Sheen. So it seems that H&M really needs to change their business model or at least their marketing. Next up, we have Meta Platforms, and although in our original story they were in the hot seat, recently their shares rose by 15%. There are three main reasons for this. The first reason was that their earnings report was extremely solid. The second reason is that they recently issued a dividend for the first time in their history, and they also issued a large share buyback program. So these are three phenomenal catalysts which ignited the overall share price, causing it to jump by 15%. Meta Platforms, ticker symbol M-E-T-A, ticker name Meta, recently released their fourth quarter
quarter earnings report, which beat revenue expectations by nearly a billion dollars. The company's revenue rose by 25% overall to top $40.1 billion, which beat Wall Street's estimates where they believed the company would only bring in $39.2 billion. Quote straight from the CEO himself, who was Mark Zuckerberg, he says, and I quote, we had a good quarter as our community and business continue to grow. But the good news doesn't stop there because they also issued their first ever dividend, which I was really surprised about, but I'm also thankful because I think this is going to benefit Meta over the long term. Meta's top executive even said, we intend to pay a cash dividend on a quarterly basis going forward, subject to market conditions and approval by our board of directors. He also went on to say that we have made a lot of progress on our vision for advancing artificial intelligence and the metaverse. So literally, this company had three phenomenal catalysts, and that's why I am a proud shareholder of this company. But Meta Platforms is not the only technology giant that is doing quite well right now, because both Apple and Amazon are increasing in their share price. The reason why Amazon is increasing in their share price recently is because they beat estimates in regards to their earnings. And they also released very strong results from its e-commerce business, and they also forecasted future growth, which was very impressive in regards to advertising. Meanwhile, Apple also brought in a very good report. Because even though Apple's services business grew slower than anticipated, and Apple's sales in China were down 13%, the company still beat on their earnings. And for me, that's still an overall win for this company, and I think investors are being irrational concerning this stock. Match Group is also doing quite well. Essentially, Match is the parent company for a multitude of various dating brands and dating sites. Match stock has been doing quite well, considering that their shares rose yesterday after it reported earnings and they announced a $1 billion share buyback program. Now, I personally am an investor in this company because essentially they have a monopoly over the dating market, at least when it comes to online dating platforms. Match is also doing quite well, considering that Match's quarterly revenue grew by 10% from a year ago. So this is very positive, despite paying users falling by 5%. By increasing the prices of various products on their online platforms, even if paying users fall due to the increased prices, their overall revenue is still climbing faster than paying users are declining. So ultimately, this was a pretty good business move. So if you want some diversity and some exposure to this company, feel free to look into Match Group before you make any investment decision. We also have a follow-up story on Boeing, who quote, reported its smallest loss in five years, which is fantastic news for this company. But the company's share price is still trending lower, despite a lot of negativity in regards to various news stories, which we have covered previously. But fundamentally, I like this company and I think they're pretty solid, so always make sure to do your own research. Now let's tackle the second news story in regards to Disney's DIS stock. If you didn't know, Netflix was cracking down on a password sharing and now Disney is following suit. Essentially, Disney is attempting to increase their profitability of their streaming business to where Disney's chief executive, who is Bob Iger, said, and I quote, we have additional opportunities for improvement in our streaming business that will come from implementing stronger standards around account sharing. Although given the timing of our planned rollout, we don't expect a meaningful impact until 2025. So it seems the fruits of Disney's labors won't end up paying off until 2025, but again, this company has extremely strong intellectual property, and that's why I'm a shareholder. On top of that, Disney is the majority owner of Hulu, and Disney is also trying to complete a deal to buy Comcast's 33% stake in Hulu. If this ends up happening, we could see Disney shares absolutely explode in excitement. So keep an eye out for that and I will keep you updated. In other stock news, we have Intel, ticker symbol INTC, which is delaying their $20 billion Ohio project. Intel has really been beaten down in their share price recently and some investors are using this as a buying opportunity. Many investors are not liking that Intel is delaying their construction timeline for their $20 billion chip making project in Ohio, and they are doing this due to market challenges. On Intel's initial timeline, they thought that chip making would start next year. However, construction on the manufacturing facilities now is not expected to be finished until late 2026. An Intel spokesperson even said, we are fully committed to completing the project and construction is continuing. So this is a little bit of a bummer, but at least in 2026, investors have a good catalyst to look forward to. You should also know that recently, uncertainty in the demand surrounding Intel's chips, which are traditionally used for traditional servers and personal computers, has been extremely volatile in their overall demand. This has led the company to forecast revenue for the first quarter below market estimates
limits and expectations, which again is going to weigh heavily on their overall share price. But like I said earlier, some investors are using this as a buying opportunity. But for me, I'm just going to wait and see what happens with this company because I'm fully content by investing into companies like AMD, Nvidia, as well as Supermicro. However, we do have a very positive news update in regard to team stock. Atlassian or Atlassian reported fiscal second quarter earnings and revenue, which topped Wall Street estimates. The company had an amazing quarter to where their earnings per share for the quarter came in at 73 cents, which is up 62% from the year prior. This annihilated analysts' predictions, which only forecasted them to bring in an earnings per share on an adjusted basis of 62 cents, but instead, this company brought in 73 cents, which was a huge earnings beat. The company also showed a strength in their revenue because their revenues rose by 21% up to $1.06 billion for the quarter, which beat estimates because the estimate was only supposed to be around $1.02 billion. Therefore, this company beat on both their earnings per share as well as their revenue, meaning that their top and bottom line beat expectations, which caused team stock to gain 7% in their share price. However, that would only represent their year-to-date gain in 2024, because after this phenomenal news, the company's stock actually fell around 8%, which made no sense to me. This just goes to show you that sometimes the market can act irrationally, but it gives an investment opportunity for people like you and I to jump on these types of companies. But always make sure to do your own research before you make an investment decision. Up next, we're going to see more market irrationality for a company that brought in strong results, but still their share price fell. Shares of Qualcomm ticker symbol QCOM fell by 5% despite bringing in stronger than anticipated quarterly results. And not only did they bring in solid results, they also forecasted very impressive future guidance from the semiconductor giant. So what's the deal with this company? Qualcomm's adjusted non-GAAP revenue grew by 5% year over year to $9.922 billion, which equates to a 16% increase in adjusted net income to $3.101 billion or $2.75 per share. Analysts, on average, were currently estimating for them to bring in around $2.37, however, they brought in much more than that, considering that they brought in $2.75. Likewise, with their revenue, analysts forecasted that they would bring in revenue of $9.52 billion, but they actually brought in $9.922 billion. But despite this phenomenal beat on earnings and revenue, the share price still fell. This is another classic example of even though a company brought in very impressive earnings and revenue and had a phenomenal earnings report, the market is acting irrationally. Their CEO even says, and I quote, Looking ahead, we are building on this momentum with our leading Snapdragon platforms and technology differentiation in connectivity, computing, and on-device generative AI across handsets, automotive, PC, XR, and industrial. Qualcomm also is forecasting very impressive results for their next earnings report. Qualcomm believes that their revenue is expected to be between around $8.9 billion and $9.7 billion, which translate to an adjusted earnings per share of $2.20 to $2.40. By contrast, analysts believe the company will bring in around $9.3 billion in revenue, and for their earnings per share, they'll bring in around $2.25 per share. But honestly, I think Qualcomm will beat these again. So despite this recent pullback in their share price, I think this provides investors a solid buying opportunity in this amazing company especially if you are a long-term investor. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all-time favorite AI stocks, which has been booming over the last year, and especially in 2024, and that is none other than Supermicro Computer. Supermicro, ticker symbol SMCI, is an amazing company to invest into, in my opinion, and they are expanding right now, and investors are extremely excited. Recently, in a regulatory filing, Supermicro divulged that they formally have entered into an agreement to buy nearly 20 acres of land. This specialty technology company is set to pay $80 million for this real estate, and the company said the deal will cover a portion of the property that it currently leases for warehouse space, so this deal should close over the next month, and I think investors are very excited about this development. It shows that this company has expansion plans that they are actually following, so investors are going to be smart to try to catch a piece of this company before they become even bigger. And with that being said, that will conclude our stock news update updates for today. So go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.